really now we are moving to the same micro level as well, well at least compared to to the uh, in amounts and numbers where the European Commission operates with the first hand experience of civil society organizations, either they are Czech partners or um, uh, we have a international organization, yeah. organization from the field, but we don't have only civil society organizations here, we have also the Czech development agency, so we can also kind of like put together all the ideas that come from development cooperation, but also since we have, at least in our public, diplomats and people from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I think we should also them in the discussion uh, forget about uh, political dialogue as another way, another channel of uh, strengthening uh, local democracy in, in Bosnia. So, uh, starting from, from our life, let's say, we have Nami Gazalic from the uh, uh, responsible of the, uh, of the capacity development corporate, uh, corporate from, uh, from Sarajevo. Then we have uh, Ivana Pejpovolna from the Czech Development Agency, who is responsible for the Western Balkans. Martin Skalski from Arnica, who had an environmental rights oriented project in Bosnia, as well as Lucia Borda Belarva, who is working on a multicultural, for the multicultural center on the managers. So please, let's start with uh, Nami Gazinic. Thank you, Andrei. Thank you, Andrei. Okay, I will, uh, as I heard that, that uh, uh, Hank's presentation was uh, hard to beat. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to beat it. But anyways, but I will lean on it and I will explain how uh, United Nations Development Program through its uh, reinforcement of local democracy project implemented IPA financed project. As you can see, uh, uh, we are financed through the uh, pre-accession assistance and this is the third phase of the project. Basically, a uh, lot as we call it, and as, as it is branded in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's a multi-phase project. The total value of the project is five million through, through three phases. And uh, uh, here you can see a definition of what is our objective, is to contribute to democratic stabilization, reconciliation, and further development. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, what we are doing, we are trying to strengthen cooperation between uh, civil society and local authorities in Bosnia and Herzegovina in various segments. <coughs> Also, as uh, Hank uh, stated before, uh, we have a TAXO program in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is a technical assistant to CSO. So, LOT project basically uh, does work with the CSOs, but uh, uh, we also work more with the local authorities in building their capacities to work with CSOs. Because uh, in previous presentations, we, we saw a mismatch between these two segments as if they are not supposed to work together, but they are supposed to work together. And the uh, 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 situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina was it such that uh, uh, due to overload of uh, international organizations' money that came into Bosnia and Herzegovina over 15 or 20 years, uh, in, in the period of 15, 20 years, there was a kind of gap created between civil society organizations and authorities on many levels. And as we heard before, it is much easier to work on a local level because immediate impact can be seen and these uh, 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 synergies can be established. The LOT project was created in a such way that we work on a local level. Uh, our partners to the project are Ministry of Justice of Bosnia and Herzegovina, both uh, uh, BIH entities, associations of municipalities and cities. And so far in these three uh, phases, we've worked with the 40 municipalities across Bosnia and Herzegovina from various from various regions in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we financed successfully over 200 uh, projects implemented by civil society organizations through our micro uh, capital grant uh, program. And of course, local authorities participated in uh, co-financing. This is uh, basically uh, an important fact to this project. Uh, we, before we didn't have a situation where uh, local authorities or any other authorities in Bosnia and Herzegovina on any other level uh, uh, co-financed any projects implemented by CSO. This was the first time that they were uh, introduced into this program. Uh, here you can see the, the, the how scattered uh, across the country our municipalities are. The, the, these are the phases, the color represent the, the municipalities that participated in, in all these three phases. Uh, the reason why we had LOT 
is that, uh, as I said, the, 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 we, the, there was really a gap between uh, cooperation between uh, civil society organizations and local governments. Uh, the, in Bosnia, we have a situation where uh, government is some kind of obliged, although nobody can find a, a legal merit why, why uh, a government is financing CSOs. And uh, really, you know, it, 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 it's a gray area, but nobody complains. The CSOs don't complain as, as, as far as they receive money, and uh, government on any level does not complain as far as CSOs are quiet. You know, so this, this is kind of a, 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 a gray zone where we, in, in which we wanted to, 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 to get involved, of course, with the, with the assistance of, of the EU. And the reason for that is uh, the accession to these, uh, uh, access to these pre-accession funds and basically building capacity, local capacities uh, to deliver, actually absorb these funds and deliver projects that, that uh, uh, to local communities where local, actually residents, will see the impact of these, these projects. Uh, also what we had, what we have the situation, until two, three years ago in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, definitely in, in a period when we created this project was that uh, there was a lack of CSO's uh, involvement in a, in a strategic planning, uh, in any decision making process with, with the governments on a local level. And basically this cooperation, if such existed, uh, was not institutionalized. It was, uh, 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 they, these were individual uh, activities, basically individual impact depending on uh, local politicians and depend, uh, depending on uh, uh, local political parties. Uh, there was division, constant division, which is now decreasing uh, of uh, we, uh, of them and us. Basically, civil society organizations are saying, always referring to government as they, and uh, 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 government at the same time refers to civil society organization as them. Uh, what we wanted to create through this project is that they work together, really create this synergy because together uh, they, they are equally important, and the, together they can make more more uh, benefits to the to the local residents. Uh, what we did and how we did it is basically through capacity development in, 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 uh, in two segments. Uh, the first segment is uh, developing uh, capacity of uh, local authorities in understanding what, is, what are CSOs about, uh, meaning what, what civil society organizations, how, how civil society organizations can benefit to their work. And uh, uh, this way we, we, we uh, targeted mayors. Basically, mayors are the ones that, that make decisions. And uh, if you, if you uh, 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 get mayors along to work with you, then you, you're, you, you can foresee a uh, certain impact in these communities. We did it in a way that uh, we issued public calls for participation in LUT project. Unlike other projects, we did not pinpoint municipalities that we wanted to work with. Uh, uh, on the contrary, we, we issued public call for, uh, for participation where uh, immediately if municipality determines to work with, the, with, with our project, they know what are the criteria, they know what, what we are looking for at the end of the project and they commit at the very beginning of the project. So we eliminate those risks that something will not work when project is, is, with, is over because they wanted to be part of the project, it's not us as international donor who wanted them to do something. Uh, we are just creating the, the environment and providing them with technical assistance to reach these, these goals. Uh, we also uh, uh, build capacities of uh, civil society organizations through grant program uh, where we uh, join funds of, of uh, EU together with the local authorities and uh, uh, using uh, pretty much EU standard scheme for uh, grant delivery and I will talk about it I will talk about it uh, now where we created LUD methodology. LUD methodology is basically a set of standards and rules uh, based on the EU grant scheme which is simplified for the 
level and capacities of uh, local authorities in Bosnia and Herzegovina and civil society organizations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It looks the same, but it's not as Hank said, it's not that uh, 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 rigid, it's not that uh, 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 limited, it's not strict, yet it provides uh, 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 a situation where you can uh, monitor grants, where you can uh, get accountability for those uh, who are implementing grants, and basically you can link uh, to, the, uh, to the local development strategies. Uh, we do ensure that the money invested uh, 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 is uh, that the results uh, uh, are provided for the money invested, because we are uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. You will often see financing. You will often hear uh, there is lack of financing of CSOs. Why we would finance CSOs anyways? We should finance projects implemented by the CSOs because the, the, the sheer existence of the CSOs does not uh, imply that the project will be implemented or does not imply that basically local residents will see some benefit of its existence. So we need to concentrate on, on projects and something that is delivered to these uh, local communities. Uh, also, uh, the, the whole process is, is transparent, something that we didn't see in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Just for the com comparison, uh, this project, third phase of this project is, is uh, worth of 2 million euros. 1 million of euros is given through grants program to these uh, 15 municipalities. That's something around 75 to 80 thousand euros per municipality. Uh, on a country level, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, for the last uh, last year, 80 million euros is financed to CSO sector. It's a huge money that nobody basically thinks of, and uh, uh, the government of Bosnia and Herzegovina, on various level, uh, uh, invests uh, huge funds that are not resulted in significant impacts on the ground. UNDP project. And this money that uh, given by EU seen a lot more impact than these 80 million euros that, that was financed by the uh, uh, government. The reason for it is transparency, transparency in financing CSO projects, especially on the, on the local level. Uh, uh, so far, the, the situation was that uh, a lot of funds were scattered to, uh, to many organizations, and the, 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 the policy was let's finance as, much, as many organizations as we can with a little of money that, that we can give. So basically you don't have, you, you have financing of 500 euros to up to 1,500 euros. There is nothing significant that you can do in a local community with 500 to, to 1,500 euros. Basically what we are uh, trying to do now is, uh, uh, and our partners, municipalities, are uh, uh, actually at the beginning of the project sign a, sign a document in which they are obliged to implement, to adopt and implement flood methodology, basically to change the way they work with CSO so far and change the way they finance CSO, CSO so far. Flood methodology principles are transparency, involvement, inclusion, and universality. And uh, I'll run through this. These are the five steps basically that we implement. I'll just quickly uh, 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 make some parallels to, to what Hank said in, in his uh, uh, previous presentation. Analysis of current issues and determining the priorities. Uh, CSOs need to be involved in these in these processes. They they need to be involved and they they need to work with government. They cannot say we ne just need money, just give us funds, and we don't care. And you should care uh, what we do with that money. No, it's other way around. They have to work with the government. They have to work on strategic documents and pinpoint what are those things that in which they have capacity that they can offer to to to, to their local authorities and make results. Now, the second, third, and fourth, fifth steps are uh, basically uh, based on the project cycle management. And uh, I will not go into details. You'll probably get this, this uh, uh, presentation later on, and then you can also contact us regarding this. Uh, what are the benefits to the uh, 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 local self-government units, as we call it, because we have municipalities, cities, and districts in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which we all identified as LSUs. Uh, the methodology is simple to use and adaptive. It, it, it does not have to be used only uh, for the for financing of CSOs. It can be used for other financing uh, also. Uh, it's the efficient use of funds. 
basically uh, uh, at the very beginning once you determine who you're going to finance or which project you are going to finance you determine what are the strategic goals of this project comparing to the local development strategy uh, it uh, uh, provides monitoring tools uh, of how the, the funds are spent uh, monitoring to tools are usually at least in Bosnia and Herzegovina are seen as inspection or control monitoring tools are far away from inspection and control monitoring tools are uh, a ways of, of coordination the activities so you reach at the end to the to, to the goal that you set at the beginning this is uh, uh, how we help these CSOs uh, achieve their goals and this is how municipalities at least our partners will work with CSOs in achieving these goals because the ultimate goal is to have the project successful not to uh, catch someone if stealing money or, 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 or whatever. It's simply getting these getting these goals done. Uh, also, the uh, 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 rec it is recommendations from the EU, having in mind that the basis for this methodology was the EU grant scheme. The benefits to the civil sector: uh, we have over 12,000 CSOs in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, uh, there, since we don't have a central register of these uh, uh, CSOs and basically government on any level is not doing monitoring of these CSOs, uh, you, we don't know how many of these are active or semi-active or active upon needs. Uh, the, 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 the assumption is that sixth of this figure is active. Uh, now, introducing this kind of financing of CSOs will ensure that those CSOs that are serious and that can seriously uh, uh, ben uh, benefit to the local communities that they stay alive and that others who are alive only when some money is around that they basically are turned off. Uh, by this we are encouraging cooperation between CSOs. We just recently, took a, a week ago, we had a conference, a small conference, very targeted conference organized by our, by our project for CSOs working in three three uh, 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 areas, uh, social inclusion, uh, support to people with disabilities, and employment. And we targeted specific organizations providing services in these, in these areas. What we wanted to do, and they come from all those areas that you saw on the map, coming from different areas of Bosnia and Herzegovina. What we wanted to do is basically uh, 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 enable them to network, to exchange their experiences. So if a project in the northwest, northwest, northwest part of Bosnia and Herzegovina is really doing good uh, in providing services in employment or uh, support to people with disabilities. We want to make sure that these, uh, these activities, these kind of projects are replicated in other parts of the country. So we created a specific arena for these people to exchange their ideas because it is still, although 20 years after the war, it's, it's still uh, uh, hard for some people to get relaxed and to, to communicate with each other, especially if they don't know the face. We have to create an arena where they will meet each other, they will know the face, and they will have uh, a, a, a basically possibility to contact each other. Uh, can you please, I mean, you, sir? I mean, could you just conclude your presentation so that we can? I just I didn't. Understand. I mean, can you just uh, yeah? Yeah, I will, I will cut it short. I will cut it short. It's uh, yeah, basically. Uh, these are the project results, just for you to see. These are the figures, 200 CSOs were involved in the project. We reached almost 50,000 uh, people. Uh, uh, I will just briefly, not, not, not in the presentation, the thing why, why, why UNDP is, is implementing this project, is, it's, it's our multi-sectoral -sector, approach. We have another two projects financed by the Swiss government, and here we talk about uh, the, the, the donor coordination. They are working on strategic strategic planning in local communities. LAD methodology now through our other project is included in, into strategic planning on a local level so, and, and it will be promoted and it will be introduced into other municipalities that are not part of our project. This is the impact, impact that, we, that we made through UNDP multi-sectoral approach. Uh, basically, if you have any questions, here are our websites, uh, here are our contacts, here is my email, here are phone numbers. You can contact us through our Facebook page or our website. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just noticed there are many problems between the local government CSO relationship sounds quite familiar also to the Czech ear and to
Yeah, so what we also achieved now through this intervention, intervention, what is really important, just to add to what Hank said, uh, uh, we are glad that EU recognized this project and did this, that this wasn't just one time shot. Uh, that we are in, into third uh, phase of the project and now we are starting <coughs> the fourth one. If we were financed only for the first or second phase, I doubt that our results would be this, uh, this as, we, as we have them now. Uh, two months ago, the, the federation level, the entity level, which is uh, above the local level, also adopted and introduced load methodology, and they will use their funds through this system of, of financing CSO projects. Thank you. So, Ivana, can you sure. present the... Uh, you have to change the presentation. Okay, you can just turn it off. Yeah. Thank you. I will do some uh, more broad uh, intervention. I mean, I would like to state that Bosnia and Herzegovina is a priority program country of the official development assistance of the Czech Republic. Uh, so it means that Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the five countries which are the most priority countries for <coughs> Czech development cooperation. And uh, government and civil society is a, a sector which is a priority sector uh, between four other sectors. Uh, so I was basically asked to speak about uh, one of the projects in our sector, government and civil society. Uh, I would like to also mention that uh, the Czech Development Agency is uh, more focused on the part uh, of the cooperation with the government institutions and there is also a uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and especially the Department for Human Rights and Transition Promotion Policy which is responsible more for support to the civil society and uh, you could see the two representatives with their projects uh, from the Department of Human Rights and I, I am really happy that I could hear the, uh, their projects from, from this program. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the projects of the Czech Development Agency are more focused on cooperation with the government institution. And, uh, but uh, how we support the civil society? Uh, basically, we support the civil society through all our projects which are uh, so-called hard projects. Let's say if we build a water treatment uh, plant or a new source of heat for a uh, town or a hospital, uh, in all of these projects we are somehow thinking about the public, about the civil society, because we have always soft components for our projects which means that we, uh, we do workshops to inform the public about our project, about how they can use, uh, how, how can they benefit from the projects which we are preparing. And also uh, we have a very good cooperation, let's say, with schools. And uh, uh, so we have lots of programs in, in, in partly, uh, in part with, in, in a like, like part of our projects. So, uh, I would like to mention these are three of our projects and basically the sector of civil society and government is, let's say, new from, the, from last year and all of our, uh, our projects are basically starting. Uh, so, I was asked to speak about uh, the project strengthening the effectiveness of judiciary in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, which is, uh, we are still in the beginning, so uh, uh, the, uh, the, there is a project document being finished and uh, this project is quite interesting uh, because we are cooperating with our Ministry of Justice of the Czech Republic on the preparation of this project and our uh, 
partner from Bosnia and Herzegovina is High Judicial and Prosecutorial Council of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is an uh, institution on state level. For us it is quite important because if there is a, an institution on a state level, then it's much more easier to cooperate with, uh, with, uh, with such an institution. Because as you may know, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a very complicated country with lots of levels of, of power. So if you have a uh, institution on state level, it's always easier. Uh, we made some kind of investigation and we found that there is a lot of, uh, lots of uh, um, donors in the, in the sector of judici judicial in reform. So we basically complement a project which is financed by IPA and very uh, big project financed by Sweden and uh, Norway. Um, and we are complementing these really huge projects with, let's say, a transition of Czech experience in, in judicial reform. Uh, because, as you may know, there is a lot of uh, backlog of cases in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, the cases are very long, they take a really long time, and there is l really a lot of them. And it's, it's those really small cases, like that somebody didn't, didn't pay for the electricity, or something like that. And there is uh, some kind of Czech experience, a new method how to deal with these small cases. Uh, it is, uh, let's say, uh, called uh, work in a mini team. So the judge has some kind of team for him, who will prepare him all the all the things and then the process is much more easier for them and he can do much more work than before. So basically we prepare this project document and we will start to work with three courts in Bosnia and Herzegovina and it's ki some kind of pilot project. So if it will work in these three courts we will try to, uh, to, try to implement in all other courts. Uh, as I said, it's very important that we have this uh, partner High Judicial and Prosecutorial Council because uh, they have, let's say, the, they are the highest in the judicial process in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they are uh, providing, uh, they are providing, uh, let's say, everything for all other institutions regarding to judicial, judicial sector. What I wanted to say as well, uh, what I see important in our projects is also the part that we take the partners from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina or from Serbia or from Kosovo and we take them to the Czech Republic and then they can see on their own eyes that something is working, something was changed, something was really uh, done. Because uh, people from ex Yugoslavia, they really remember how it was in Czech, ex -Czechoslo Czechoslovakia, how it was, let's say, bad or strange. And now they are coming, and they see, they they couldn't believe their eyes because they see that that there is a country which, let's say, something is working, something is working quite well, and then that the change was done in over, let's say, 20 years. So somehow it is a hope for, for people from ex Yugoslavia if something could have been done in, 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 a, in, a, in a place like Czechoslovakia, like Czech Republic, then there is a hope for them that it could be also done in, in Bosnia, in Serbia, in Kosovo. So I think this, this, this part of our projects um, is also important uh, because I must say, for example, in our one, one our agriculture project, we, ha we take farmers from one farmers as a, uh, association and introduce them how the, 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 how the farms are working in the Czech Republic. They, they made a one, one, uh, one week tour around Czech Republic and they could see on their own eyes, they could hear that the European Union provided grants to build a new farm, to build a new to, to equip the farm and then they could see, wow, how, how can this be done? I, I want really this change. And then we uh, visited them back in, in Bosnia and we could really see that they implemented what they see in the Czech Republic. And the, the best what, what was uh, from that, that they were talking to their neighbors and they were say, saying, you see, I put this uh, small house for a calf 
and the calf is more healthy, the calf is more happy, and it is growing more uh, faster. So the neighbor said, wow, what's a good, good idea, I will do the same. So uh, for me, this was uh, like the, the most successful uh, part of our project, which was a three or four years project, very, exp very extensive. So I think the, uh, this is also important part of the, of the assistance, that the um, beneficiary could see that there is a possibility for change. So I mentioned also other projects in the sector, uh, but I think I, I spent my time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mark Diskalski from Anika, which is a well-known environmental NGO, and I'm happy to see that they also have activities and prospering that experience abroad. Okay, thank you. Uh, we started to work in Bosnia only this year, so we, we still don't have any results or uh, any visible outcomes of the project, but basically we work in central Bosnia, uh, in uh, Zenica Canton, and uh, we are focused on environmental pollution in, in, this, in this canton. We've got also a local partner, which is also NGO, and um, what we are doing with the project is actually the investigation of um, industrial pollution in, in the canton, and uh, kind of hotspots that, that are that are in the place, and we would like to uh, establish kind of a coalition of uh, civil society organizations in those polluted places. So basically, um, we are in, um, in the touch with the with the citizens group uh, that are already active and want to do something with the situation. Um, uh, in that project, what what already happened is that uh, we opened. Uh, so-called public consultation center, so people can come to, to our partner in Zenica and ask the questions, and um, they can get uh, a legal advice or expert advice uh, about the environment and also public participation, which is the uh, um, objective of the project to, to rise the, the public uh, activeness uh, in, in decision-making procedures. Um, in the project, we will uh, we will organize uh, a series of the workshops or trainings for, for um, local NGOs or informal groups, uh, and we would like to open um, some space for debates how to solve the local issues. Uh, we are mainly uh, focused on the on the air pollution, which is one of the biggest problem uh, in, in the area because uh, the Nitsa Canton is is kind of a industrial heart of the country, so. Uh, especially the pollution of the air is one of the major problems in, in, in the in, in the place, and um, so in a couple of months we will come with um, with the list of hotspots and um, we will try to find some solutions what to do with the uh, with those problems uh, that exist uh, in in, uh, in Zenica Canton and we would like to compare. Uh, some of the industrial facilities with the examples from Czech Republic or other European countries. Uh, for example, in Zenica there is a, there's a huge steelworks and uh, exactly the same factories in Austria in Czech Republic. Uh, but the pollution in Zenica is at the level of may maybe 80s uh, of the Czech Republic. So, so there, is a, there is a big progress uh, in Czech Republic that we can show, uh, but it was also necessary to um, organize and coordinate some public pressure and also uh, a big activity of the local authorities to, to make some change. So, so these are some examples we would like to bring to Bosnia and to show that it's possible to change the things. Uh, except of the NGOs, we, we cooperate also with the authorities on the level of, of Canton uh, and also with the Federal Ministry of Environment, which is responsible for, for many things uh, uh, that are necessary for implementation of uh, this project. Um, yeah. So that's, that's basically it. Um, uh, I would like to maybe mention that we were surprised that the, uh, the legislation in Bosnia is, is in quite good state because um, the country implements a lot of uh, procedures and also standards of European Union. So, uh, so basically on the paper uh, the things are not bad, uh, but the problem is implementation and enforcement. And we feel that there is a lack of uh, capacities and of, or also budgets uh, on the side of authorities to really uh, enforce the legislation and and of course the the citizens groups are also not experienced enough to to know their rights and uh, to know uh, how to use the procedures that exist so it needs the education of the of the citizens on one side 
and um, but also there is a problem on the on the level of authorities that just don't have as tools or capacities to um, to be really a partners to the big uh, companies that are not only national companies but sometimes also multinational that, that are much more powerful than uh, than some uh, municipality or even even a federal ministry maybe sometimes um, so yeah so that, that's a brief introduction and maybe if you have some more questions I, I can answer. Thank you very much. Um, what the is the Lucid Bederva from the North Culture Center Pride? Um, I'm representing another project supported by the Transition Promotion Program. As it was mentioned before, it's an educational project that is focused in Hercegovačko Nerdvánsky Canton. Uh, it's focused uh, in the school area uh, for the teachers and the idea is to deliver a method on multicultural education that we have been successfully using here in the Czech Republic on the schools that are segregated either with Roma uh, kids or with uh, foreigners uh, being in the Czech Republic to use it in the area that is most segregated in uh, the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina which is the Herzegovina uh, Neretvanski Canton. Um, the pre-assumption pre behind uh, this idea is that uh, with, with the segregated education system, uh, the new generation of uh, children or adults uh, that has a very um, nationalistic or let's say prejudiced points of view on the others while not meeting the others uh, cannot bring any um, successful civil society or reconciliation, peace reconciliation. So the idea is to work basically in the two schools under one roof, Veškole uh, Kotedum Krovem, which ethnically segregates the, the children in the shifts uh, coming in the morning, in the afternoon. I think you are familiar with this, uh, with this concept. So the project is focused uh, in, in there, bringing teachers uh, the method how to work with the ethnic segregation directly in the curriculum. So practically, uh, the teachers will get a concept and a training on uh, uh, methods how to deal with the workshops that will bring together the kids or the students from both of the shits, so both Bosnik and both Croat, uh, and uh, giving them either the tools for uh, leading the workshops, methodology, but also like kind of methods how to prevent the conflicts or how to deal. Uh, with tensions that uh, that might uh, come or maybe not, uh, we do it with uh, with the local organization. Uh, we cooperate with uh, Nansen Dialog Center with the branch in Mostar, uh, which has been already successfully working with teachers and also with politicians for the past few years, uh, being set up by uh, Norwegian. Uh, headquarters and uh, now being uh, working in the ex-Yugoslavia on this topic so uh, the partner has relevant experience also with picking up the teachers uh, who are not let's say uh, seg pro-segregative or um, supporting the system as it is or the status quo uh, as it is now um, the result also, also, or the vision uh, of the uh, of the project in the next year, not uh, not this year, but in the, in the in the future, is uh, to create kind of few success stories in the in this canton and uh, meet or interlink uh, directors of the schools and uh, local authorities from the local cantonal ministries as well as from the local um, uh, pedagogical institution, pedagogical results, uh, which can then see the success stories of, uh, let's say, uh, what we can call multicultural or common education, at least as a first uh, step uh, for, for motivation of the politicians to do or go for an inclusive education. That's very much it. Okay, thank you very much. So, so we have like 20-25 minutes of uh, discussion if you want to have